What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and allow me to put on my glasses because Black Widow has completely collapsed at the theater, dropping as much as 80% in the second weekend. This is unprecedented for a Marvel uh, movie at any level. And you really can't blame, you know, as a percentage, the various lockdowns. Um, I don't think the movie is terrible. It's a middle-of-the-road Marvel movie. Um, so why do we think that this is? Could it be some of the marketing uh, going on around the the film itself? Um, I don't know. I don't feel like anyone, you know, the general fan base, I think, really loves Black Widow. Um, is it that the world is getting tired of cape movies? I think that's actually part of it and the politicization of so many of these films and every time it comes out, it's got to be, what is a political statement of this Marvel movie going to be? I think that that, my friends, is actually more powerful than any random snippet or bad interview done for this particular movie. So much so that I'm willing to bet my shorts. Check this out. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Sheath. It looks like a lot of you are taking advantage of this and giving these things a try, and I am here for it. Guys, fellas, or ladies who are buying for fellas, we don't change what we buy. Most men go through their entire lives wearing the same old boxers or boxer briefs or jockeys. Look, what Sheath offers are boxers that are designed to keep your balls off your legs. Sheath has three individual compartments to keep everything down there separate, cool, and comfortable. They were invented by a US Army soldier who came up with the idea for Sheath during his second tour in Iraq, where it's hot as heck and his boys needed to breathe. He invented these underwear to keep your boys cool and comfortable. He's basically an all-around hero. And I have an amazing offer for you. If you use promo code THEQUARTERING, you will save 20% off at checkout. That's sheathunderwear.com slash thequartering. The link will be in the description and pinned comment down below. I think you'll like them. Hey, give them a try. If you don't like them, that's cool. But uh, give old Sheath a try. Now, Black Widow theater owners blast Disney, uh, Disney's day and date strategy for undermining Marvel Pick's box office and future revenues. The National Association of Theater Owners have finally spoken out about the financial peril involved in Disney's ambitious day and date theatrical release and release of Black Widow. In the press, dropped this afternoon following our analysis of what went sideways with the MCU title. They asked, how can a well-reviewed, well-received, highly anticipated Marvel title underperform leading to a first weekend Friday to Saturday collapse of 41%, 67% drop in weekend two. They, they come to the same conclusions as we did. Black Widow getting her legs picked off. Piracy and Disney Plus at home cannibalization, which impacts not just the box office, but the picture's subsequent home window as well. Disney's theatrical day and date release model ignores the premier access revenue is not found newfound money, but it was pulled forward from a more traditional uh, premium VOD window, which is no longer an option. So essentially what they wanted to say was, what they're trying to say is put the PVOD like after you know a month after the movie comes out or something like that, as opposed to the very same day that it comes out. Despite assertions, that this lockdown era improvised release strategy was a success for Disney and simultaneous release model. It demonstrates that an exclusive theatrical release means more revenue for all stakeholders in every cycle of the movie's life, emphasizes the news, uh, the news drop. Given the opening day to weekend ratios of comparable Marvel movies and other successful lockdown era films like Fast 9 and A Quiet Place Part 2, they say that Black Widow should have opened between 92 and 100 million based on preview revenue compared to the same titles. Black Widow could have opened anywhere from 97 to 130 million. They go further. In specifying the lost amount of dollars for Black Widow is exhibition, the average number of people per household in the U.S. is 2.37. One can assume that family-oriented Disney Plus household is larger. How much? 
how much password sharing is among Disney Plus subscribers. Combined with the lost theatrical revenue and foregone traditional PVOD revenue, the answer to these questions will show that simultaneous release, giggity, cost Disney money in revenue per viewer over the life of the film. They also pointed to the Torrent Freak report that cited for the week ending on July 12th, Black Widow was the most pirated movie. We've heard from the industry sources that Black Widow was pirated even more than Wonder Woman 1984. Piracy, no doubt, further affected Black Widow's performance and will affect its future performance in international markets where it hasn't even opened yet. It's also available on a myriad of other streaming sites all over the internet. Now, I think that Blaming people stealing the movie is a fool's errand. It's the same bunk argument that video game developers make about people pirating their video games. I believe strongly, and I believe also that data supports this, that somebody who takes your movie, torrents it or whatever, they weren't a customer anyway. They aren't saying, oh, wow, geez, I guess I'll pay $30 to, to rent this movie on Disney Plus since I can't find it streaming anywhere. No, they just wait until they can or they never watch it. They don't then run to the movie theater and say, oh, I tried to torrent it on, on the release day and I couldn't get it. So I guess I'll go pay at the movie theater. That's not how this works. Back when I was young, a, a guy I knew who you know enjoyed getting movies or video games off certain websites, I would get games I never had any interest at all in playing. I mean, they would, and uh, you know, it's like I, I don't, I don't understand. You know, I, I think that most people that pirate are not paying customers. Maybe some small percentage of them, but if we look at these numbers, they are brutal. Box office Black Widow suffers record. 80% Friday drop. Black Widow gets slammed by Space Jam, a new legacy on Friday night, taking a brutal 80% drop from its 39 million opening day. The Scarlett Johansson starring prequel earned 8 million on yesterday, sorry, earning its eight day total to just 113 million. That will drop, it's, that drop is on par with the 80% tumble of Batman versus Superman and the 83% for Dark Phoenix. It's by far the worst Friday to Friday drop for a Marvel movie. I, this is a really interesting case because it's not the same thing as like when we had um, Captain Marvel and we had some divisive, you know, marketing and, and some stuff like that. A divisive actress. Pretty much everyone in the MCU loves Scarlett Johansson. Black Widow is an established character. I'm wondering, and, and I guess... This is my current running hypothesis, and I'll be curious to hear what you say in the comment sections down below, but I think people are just tired of cape stuff. I don't think that Black Mar uh, Black Widow, let's say, was... I mean, it certainly wasn't the best Marvel movie, but it wasn't anywhere near the worst. It was just another middle-of-the-road Marvel movie. The reviews that came out were middle-of-the-road, so it's not like terrible reviews got people to not see it. Um, I think that... People are more skeptical of Marvel movies now, especially in a post-Endgame era. I think that people rely heavily on um, movie reviewers on YouTube. Great ones like Critical Drinker did not care for this movie. Um, and, you know, when you got a guy like him who's so well-respected, probably has a million views on that review by now. I mean, you probably cost him 100,000 tickets, maybe 50,000, 75,000, I think, to be, like, very... Uh, conservative um, and the fact that it was available on Disney Plus also made it feel like not important it made it feel like oh it's out I'll just watch it whenever I think that people have realized that the cape stuff ain't that great anymore it's been heavily politicized and if you already have Disney Plus which is a hundred million people over a hundred million people you're just waiting till October to watch it for free that's what this is. The fact of the matter is, if people saw the value and saw something that they felt like they absolutely had to see, they would have went to the theater to see it, and they would have paid to see it. I mean, you're going to get beat by the fast and the furious. These aren't even real movies. Like, 
it's it's so hilarious. Marvel should be embarrassed. Black Widow crashes the box office, gets smoked by LeBron James' Space Jam movie. In the numbers, Black Widow only brought in $26 million in its second domestic weekend, getting beat by Space Jam. Black Widow previously earned $80 million in its domestic opening weekend, meaning the gross declined 67%. To put that in perspective, the most recent MCU entry before Black Widow was Spider-Man Far From Home. The film only had an 51% decline from opening weekend to second. It earned 92 in its opening and 45 in the second. It might not be the greatest comparison, though, given that Spider-Man Far From Home had a unique opening strategy back in 2019, where it was released on a Tuesday to take advantage of the long 4th of July weekend. Before Spider-Man Far, Far From Home, Avengers Endgame earned $357 million in its opening weekend and $147 million in its second, only a 59% drop. I mean, I don't think that you know 59 to 67 is not some massive amount. It's just the numbers we're dealing with are uh, shockingly low for a Marvel film. I think a lot of people, a lot of people like myself checked out after Endgame. I just have very little interest in anything Marvel has to say now. Doctor Strange 2, yeah, I'll watch it. Probably going to stream it, and I'll wait to stream it for free. Um, the, the Eternals? <laughs> I bet you The Eternals will be a disaster. Um, and nobody's paying... By the way, nobody pay, nobody's paying $30 for The Eternals on Pivot either. That's not happening. People paid $30 because we love Black Widow, and 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 that, but the Eternals is doesn't have the same pull, so they're not going to make sixty million on Disney Plus in the opening weekend. It's just not happening. Um, I, I would say, yeah, this is the new normal, Marvel. I think you should get used to it. Um, it's going to be a rough, rough go of it, and and the question is, will they be able to? Um, will they be able to? Uh, regenerate or reboot this whole franchise they're going to need all new superheroes all new um actors and actresses and when you're getting by getting beat by fast and the furious that's a dark sign for marvel indeed i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do click that red subscribe button down below and we'll talk to you again real soon